My son, the Order of Trinity has received word that the Prophet's followers are building a great tomb at an oasis outside Berea. But more upsetting, while we thought they were building the tomb for their Prophet, Trinity now believes he still lives. We have learned he is preaching his heresy among the local citizens, drawing more to him daily with his tales of how he conquered death. He is a liar and a heretic, claiming miracles that come only from the divine. You swore he was dead. Have you failed us? I have learned all I can from the carnage inside the Prophet's tomb. My brothers were slain to the last man sometime within the last few days. The false prophet's followers died here by the hundreds, but in the end, they were victorious. I have sealed the tomb as best I can and told the men of the nearby village that the Prophet is at last dead. I left them with a the subtle threat that this place should remain hidden. I do not know if the Prophet survived, but I will follow their trail. No one escapes the Order of Trinity. The Prophet and his followers have been traveling under cover of night, a crooked trail around the border of the Eastern Empire. I do not know where they are headed, and I suspect they do not either. But they know we will not let them rest until this heresy is purged. The common folk of the Borderlands give him shelter, and I find it curious that none who have aided him will tell me anything of use. Even when I threaten them with the wrath of Trinity or touch the edge of a knife to their throats, they stay silent. They die, never betraying what they know. The Prophet has a curious sway over people. All the more reason he must be silenced. Comrades, this report comes to you following an unprecedented discovery in the mountains of Freedom Station. Our deep mine crew has broken into a massive cavern filled with incredible ruins and artifacts, the likes of which have never been found in the motherland. The workers that we acquired from the native population have become agitated following the discovery. They clearly know something about these ruins. We will begin working the prisoners around the clock, for I believe we are on the verge of an even more amazing discovery. Another difficult winter for my people. There are more deaths than births now. And as the seasons pass, the young ones are becoming restless. I see them looking to the sky when the rare plane passes overhead. Wistful. Wondering. Longing. I know they are still deeply committed to the cause. But I also sense a change coming. An end to our way of life is on the horizon. The most recent invaders are fading from memory. But as the technology of men advances, more are bound to find our valley again. And we are bound with the fate of this place. For better, or worse. The day I feared has come. There can be no more denying it. The helicopters we saw last sundown represent a new incursion onto our lands. We have grown up in the shadow of our parents' struggle. And now, it seems, we will have our own. But the sacred duty must be done. We must protect the source of God's grace on Earth. I have failed. There will be no pardon for my sins. I have drenched my hands in blood in pursuit of the Prophet, and now there is nothing left. As the attack became a siege, the Prophet's people did the unthinkable. They turned their weapons against the glaciers and buried their own city. Mongol and the Prophet's people alike were crushed in the ice. The Khan and his warrior horde are dead. The people of Katesh are broken and scattered. I alone survive in the frozen heart of the city, and my only companions are the deathless army of the Prophet, their eyes aflame with unholy light. Even now, they hunt the ruins for survivors. God is testing me. I've scavenged weapons and tools enough to survive. The Khan once demanded I learn to draw a bow and fight like one of his soldiers, and I am grateful for that. He gave me his own arrows, 
made for punching holes in armor. The ice around me provides all I need to drink, but it runs red with blood. The Prophet's army now patrols a dead city. These are not the soldiers who first met us at the city gates. They've been changed somehow. Among them, I can see a man that I myself killed in the battle. The old legends say that those who looked upon the divine source relinquished their very souls to it, attaining immortality. If this is true, I will surely perish here, buried with the secret I was sent to find. I've finally laid my betrayals bare. Lara knows the truth. Now a strange series of emotions has gripped me. Remorse, certainly. Remorse for a piece of me that was left inside that torture cell. But something else, too. I know Constantine thinks that I've lost my edge, that my time with the Crofts has made me soft, but he's wrong. It isn't softness. It feels instead like a new kind of resolve. I knew Lord Croft to be an intelligent man. I know his daughter holds secrets in her head. As an ally, she'd be invaluable. As an enemy, she'll be a difficult problem. I must make sure that Constantine's arrogance doesn't get the better of him as we take her on. Anna has let the mask fall. She and I are finally fully reunited. It has been difficult without her these past years. When I'm weak, it's always been her voice that gave me strength. When she loses hope, I ignite that hope for her. That being said, I must confess that I am worried about her. Her health falters, yes, but my concern is with her resolve. I fear that some piece of her was lost in her time with the Crofts. She must have faked her emotions for Lord Croft so powerfully they became real. And now I feel that fear has spilled over to Laura. Strange being in the field again. I was undercover for so long, locked in a life of comfort at Croft Manor. Here, there is no comfort at all. The air is frozen, the food is canned and cold. The company, aside from Constantine, is abysmal. But I asked to be here. I need to be here. I do not have the luxury of time or patience. Constantine and I begin this journey together. I will be there when he fulfills his destiny. So for now, I'll breathe deep. I'll let the cold air burn my lungs. I'll let it remind me that I'm still alive. And let it fuel me for the final push towards our destiny. As we push deeper into the valley, I feel reassured that this is the work I was chosen to perform. My stigmata itch with sensation. It is a constant reminder of my higher purpose. Of my singular position in this higher purpose. I was a child, innocent to the evils of the world. Then, one night, I woke in such pain, a scream on my lips. Blood dripped from my palms when I saw it. I was terrified. It marked me. It meant something. I cannot shirk this mission any more than I can shirk my own hands. We're gearing up. I was on the first flight to Siberia to secure the old Soviet installation now. More arriving every minute. Constantine gave a speech to the new boots, and I stayed in the back to watch. Love hearing him speak. Never gets old. I was never much for believing, but it was just words before this. is something more. It's truth. I was broken once. But Trinity is making us whole again. Giving, giving us a purpose. A new world awaits. Even those who don't believe will have a part to play. I know I've taken some jobs of questionable legality, and I know you're not happy about it. But I couldn't pass up this contract. Been trying to get work with Trinity for years. They're discreet, the pay is obscene, and they always have opportunities. Now here I am, and I already want out. We're at an abandoned Soviet installation in the middle of nowhere. No one's telling us low-level contractors what's going on, but... I think I might be helping some seriously scary people get a nuke or something equally awful. Honestly, that's the best case scenario. Ping me back if you get this. I've carved out a secure channel on the network. For an operation like this, you'd think they'd have better security, but I guess that's why they hired me. Security guards came at night. 
Knew they would. I crossed a line when I killed the tech from Echo Squad. I knew I shouldn't have, but I couldn't help it. Remnant weren't enough. I needed something more. They brought me to the windowless room. I thought I was dead. And then Constantine was there. He took my head in his hands and smiled. He told me he understood. He was like me once. I've sinned, but there could be forgiveness. <laughs> I have been a blunt instrument, swinging wildly. He told me I could be redeemed. I've got a special skill. I just need sharpening. Trinity can make me a weapon, point me in the right direction. I almost cried and kissed his feet. I will become what I was meant to be for Trinity, for Constantine. <coughs> oh, this fucking illness. It's ruining my body. Now it threatens my mind as well. I keep drifting off, getting lost in memories, lost in thoughts of the day Lord Croft died. How the plan had to shift, how I thought we had failed. And before that, my early days with Trinity, learning the secret histories of the world, learning that it was our duty to save it, and back farther to childhood. Constantine and I with only each other to rely on. And then I rip myself free, back to the present. I've always done what had to be done, and this time will be no different. Croft continues to create difficulties for us. She's rallied the Valley people from their squalid huts and helped lead them to a series of victories. I wish I could make her understand just how wrong she is, how misguided her ideas of morality are. The world is too flawed for stopgaps. A lone hero cannot rescue it. The idea of revealing the Divine Source to the world would be laughable if it wasn't so dangerous. Did I think she could be turned to Trinity's side before? Yes. But not anymore. We were close, she and I. There is a bond there, but... I think now there is no other choice. She must be broken. And I know she can be broken. I've broken stronger than her. I won't die in this godforsaken valley. My faith is strong. My will is strong. Even if my mind keeps wandering away. In our youth, Constantine and I in our youth, he... He was a difficult child. Always wondering, always questioning, afraid of what the future might hold. Afraid that he might never find his purpose. The night I cut those marks into his hands, the night I whispered into his ear, I made him. I saved him. He believed it to be the work of God, just as I'd hoped. Now I need him to save me. And if in the end he can't, then I'll save myself.